This is DJ Leonetikos. Welcome to Live Free Radio. Welcome to Live Free Radio. This is DJ Leonetikos, and it is another amazing day out here in the valley. So there's a few things that I want to get to first before the juiciness of the music. And so my job is to basically relay certain information via this podcast via a lot of different platforms about certain things that I believe that not only do I find very important for people to know but that are also it's something that I believe I'm actually being called to do so pretty much everything I'm going to talk about as well as the way that I talk about it will go into something where you can connect the dots it's like a big web everything's connected and that connectedness is kind of an underlying pattern of the truth of people's path towards said truth the real truth whatever it is it's it's the truth itself are the never changing underlying patterns that are always there they were always already there they're always going to be there. These underlying patterns are the truth. And my job is to relay as much of this information that I know as I understand it to you guys. And, uh, and then when I'm done, I'm going to let a lot of that process with an amazing mix that I have lined up for you guys today. So welcome to the apocalypse. This is Live Free Radio. DJ Leonetikos here. So the first part is going to be my spiritual reasoning behind this podcast, not only behind the music that I play, but behind the exact stuff that I play for the exact reason that I play. Very wide range of music, very deep, very emotional, very, very, very technical. 
and it kind of has this really unique property to kind of launch people towards this certain kind of state. Now, it do, it's just not the same when you listen to certain pop music and even certain heavy music. Like, it can be any kind of heavy music, but what I'm talking about, this stuff is heavy, it's deep, bassy, very emotional, and it's just, it's somehow, and I have so much of it, that's another reason that this Live Free Radio is going to involve so much music because I believe that it's important in a very, very, very necessary way. And it's awesome. And it's dope. And you can roll a damn blunt to it anytime. It's amazing. So I got spiritual reasoning behind the podcast, the music, and the radio show content, which is what you're hearing right now. And some... Okay, so this podcast is going to be kind of a 101 crash course on some basic things that I believe everybody should know in the, right off the bat in the beginning. Now, everything that this podcast is pretty much about, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of information that I'm going to be relaying. There's this huge story that's going to build. There's just a lot to it. And it could take quite a long time to even relay all of it. And so that's why we have episodes. So this is episode three, kind of another intro, but it's the main show. Now, one thing I want to talk about is the sacredness in everything. There's just something special about that fact. Now, a lot of people know the word sacred. They kind of know what it implies. They kind of know what it means. But ultimately, I believe from my limited perspective, of course, that I, I, what I'm seeing is that not a lot of people actually understand it. So I've had the pleasure of having a very important series of very deeply spiritual experiences that allowed me to become not only aware of sacredness, but very, very much aware. Now I'm talking about overwhelmingly aware of sacredness. Now, this is interesting because I found out that sacredness lies in everything. You know, there's a lot of traumatization happening with one of the biggest things, for example, is sex. A lot of people do not acknowledge the, na the, the innate sacredness behind sex, which it is very, very potent, the sacredness. But a lot of people don't sense it. So I've had the opportunity to equal my sense of sacredness to kind of like a smell or like a or like a, an audio experience or telepathic or, or something. I can sense it. I can almost smell it. It almost has a flavor to it that, that it doesn't have like a normal flavor of like when you put something in your mouth or when you actually smell something, but it very much has a flavor to it. And you can see it in absolutely everything, everything. The truth that I'm going to be talking about in this podcast primarily the truth, the true path, whatever you want to call it, there's many names it goes by or has gone by, is in your face, on the daily, everywhere, and in your entire, probably your entire life that you've grown up, especially, well, I live in America, so I'm speaking primarily for Americans. A lot of American culture, people grow up Christian, Catholic, all this different stuff, and it's absolutely everywhere. In sacred texts, all of the ancient sacred texts that you can find, including the Bible, um, it, the, the truth is everywhere. So the sacredness and everything, well, when you look at magic, for example, there's this acknowledgement to the power that the magic holds. So you see movies and whatever of these wizards and they're doing some magic stuff and you know, a lot of what they're actually doing is acknowledging this power. They're, they're putting candles, they're making altars, they're acknowledging the power within certain material items such as crystals and feathers and spirit and all this other stuff. Smoke, sage. I mean, the Catholic Church adopted this kind of very ancient way before the Catholicism even arose where they would burn frankincense in the church and other stuff. And including you got Palo Santo, which means Hollywood, um, sage, white sage uh, is my favorite. And so there's just something sacred about it. And what I'm being called to relay is for everybody to actually acknowledge the sacredness in everything. So that means that everything you do, 
doesn't matter what it is, your daily life, your entire life should become a beautiful sacred ritual. Okay, so Jordan Peterson talks about cleaning up your own house and getting that in order before you even think about messing around with the rest of society. And so if you acknowledge the sacredness in cleaning your own room, and I'm talking about figuratively speaking, uh, your inner self, but also even in your external world, because doing it externally uh, plays a part in acknowledging it internally. And there's this sacredness in that. And so if we can be more aware and present in our everyday life of the sacredness in cleaning, cleaning your house, uh, preparing food. Um, let's say you have people over for dinner and you want to cook them food. Try to just take your time. Go slow. And when I say go slow, I mean take the time to think about, okay, this spice. Mmm, that's going to go good. Smell it. Open it. Smell it. Taste it. Put a little bit in there. Mix it. Taste it. Put your hand over the food as you're mixing it and acknowledge that what you're actually doing is feeding people. You are about to feed people at your house. You are hosting them. There is a sacredness to being kind to others. And so when you host a dinner of any kind at your house, which is a basic thing that everybody pretty much does to some degree or another, just now be more aware that there is this beautiful sacredness in everything that you're doing. Okay, when you're kind to another person, you know, it's not selfish in a bad way to acknowledge that what you did was a beautiful, sacred act. Okay, because you deserve, as well as everybody else deserves, the actual acknowledgement of the sacredness that they act out every day and more. Do it all the time. It doesn't matter what, you, what, what you're going to do. I have altars. I have crystals everywhere. And I just acknowledge the beauty in them and I learn about them and I take the time to, to, to just acknowledge their awesomeness and to acknowledge the awesomeness of crystals or feeding people or being nice or whatever it is I do with my life, making music. Uh, there's beauty and sacredness just swimming all around in all of that stuff. And if you're consciously aware of it, which is the next topic that I'm basically talking about here that I'm calling everybody who's hearing this to do is to just simply be conscious and aware of the things that you do, of who you are, of what you're about, okay? Just be aware of it to the fullest extent. A lot of people have an issue with depression and stuff like that, which I have as well in the past. And a lot of people don't know what the hell they're doing or who they are. Okay, well, what better start than to call on everybody, especially people who are having a harder time, to acknowledge the beauty and the sacredness within themselves and everything that they do. Because that means that they now can acknowledge the fact that they deserve Everybody deserves that. Everybody deserves to experience sacredness. It's beautiful. And that means that people can have the opportunity to, to look at themselves and go, wow, I'm actually better than I realized. This is cooler than I realized. And what I'm engaging in on a daily basis, aka acknowledging the sacredness and just being simply consciously aware of that as well as everything that you do on a daily basis, is a beautiful thing. And it creates worth in people. People will now be more worthy of of themselves and everything that they do because now they go, oh, I know what I'm doing. Holy shit. This isn't just me being nice to somebody because I've had hard times, which is cool. But when you go, man, I actually helped that person. And now it gets to a touchy subject because you don't want to build an ego over it. We're trying to get rid of the ego. So you don't want to be like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. Like I totally helped that hobo and it was so great. But like you really just want to keep it real. Keep it real with yourself. You know, acknowledge the beauty that you actually did. But then go, oh, yeah, that was very good. I'm happy with myself. And then now I'm going to go, you know, smoke a blunt, whatever. It's all good. Let it go. Let it go when you're done. Because it doesn't matter if you're holding on to an egoically selfish thing or if you're holding on to even a beautiful thing like the sacredness. If you hold on too much to it, if you attach too much emotion to these things, then it, uh, it it's going backwards. Sorry to say that. Not really. It's going backwards. So you, you, you just want to experience the beauty of whatever it is and then let it go. You want to experience the hurt and pain of whatever it is. Acknowledge it, witness it, then let it go. So acknowledging the sacredness and everything. Uh, there's also this really super cool stuff. I want to give a shout out to Santos Bonacci because he's really opened my eye, my eyes to this stuff on a way deeper level than ever before because everybody knows what fractals are. 
okay, fractals. It's like those trippy videos where you see it just endlessly fractalizing, endlessly, it can keep zooming in forever. But the whole point behind that geometry that we've discovered is that that fractalizing nature is ever present all the way from the super macro all the way to the super micro, infinitely in both directions as well as the constantly in the present. Okay, so when you have a galaxy, the, the, the level of the spiral fractal, which is also Fibonacci sequence that that galaxy is upholding, it is also somehow magically manifesting within all the plants that you see that have this pattern that are always the same. Oh, not to mention, um, you look at a tree, right? Okay, just imagine a tree in a field. It's a fucking tree, okay? Now, okay, for all you stoners out there, hold a nug next to that tree. That nug will be almost identical to a whole entire tree, but just really tiny. Okay, so this underlying fractalizing pattern that is always happening all the time, which is a very, very integral and essential underlying pattern to our entire existence here on Earth. Okay, that fractalizing underlying never changing, always present, always will be, always was present fractalizing pattern. Okay, that's God. That's proof of God. That is a symbol and a sign of the existence of a super hyper intelligent energy that not only is super hyper intelligent and there for us to witness all the time because scientists study it all the time. It's a, it's a whole thing. Um, but it is sacred to acknowledge that because that is going to teach you about a little bit more than you knew before about the theory of infinity which is incomprehensible. It's too great and long and big. It's so incomprehensible. Okay, well, this fractal stuff goes on for infinity in all directions. Okay, well, what is the nature of God? Infinite, very infinite, right? So I don't get why you got a lot of people uh, that reject a lot of that stuff. Well, I do get it. It's because they're extremely hyper-programmed by a very corrupted society. But still, to me, it's just blatantly obvious. And uh, so I'm calling on everybody uh, who hears this podcast right now to acknowledge that. Go Google it. Just Google Santos Bonacci and syncretism because he talks about way deeper stuff than even what I just mentioned, which involves the idea that that same fractalizing pattern that is always reigniting that same pattern just forever, all the time, everywhere in our entire existence here in the physical reality and in every other reality um, you'll see, for example, uh, Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Well, somehow that exact story correlates with the movements of planets. Okay, you have Jack and Jill, which would be, uh, I think it's either Jupiter or Saturn or two twin planets. And they go up in the zodiac circle. They go up to Aquarius, which is the zodiac sign of water. Okay, go up the hill to fetch a pail of water clockwise. Okay, this is not a joke. This is a total science. It's absolutely amazing. So Google Santos Bonacci and syncretism and fractals. Google, Google anything that I talk about. Just Google it. Okay, like I'm talking about it, but don't ever take my word for anything. Like I know what I'm talking about, but, but you should still go do your own research about a lot of this stuff because your journey is important. And so I can tell you a bunch of stuff, but for you to blindly believe me is part of the problem in the world because people blindly believe stupid bullshit like CNN and they think it's real and they think it's the whole truth and nothing but the whole truth, but it's like very far from it. In many ways, a lot of our society is a hologram. It's fake. It's not real or it's disillusionment, which is something that you thought was, but it was different than what you thought it was, which is the meaning of disillusion. So do your own research because for you to embark on that journey, um, another thing I was called on people to acknowledge is that you need to put the blood, sweat, and tears in this work for you to really truly learn the truth and walk that walk. You know, everybody knows about that whole term, walk the walk, don't talk the talk. You need to walk it too. Well, you know, you're never going to be able to get into the kingdom of heaven, quote unquote, um, without putting the blood, sweat, and tears into acknowledging the sacredness in everything and being as aware of yourself and everything else as much as you possibly can. Don't hurt yourself over it, but just be aware of everything that you can possibly be aware of, starting with yourself. Okay? So doing this is essential. So when I say Google everything, 
it's essential for you to go on your own journey of enlightenment because that's you putting in the blood, sweat, and tears to find the truth. Now, I just explained the fractalizing nature of God, essentially, the fractalizing nature of everything that always is fractalizing. So just the very act of you sacredly, because again, there's sacredness in everything, especially the journey for truth. If you just say to yourself, I don't care, I just want to know whatever the truth is and have that burning desire for the truth and nothing but the truth and always question everything and always try to find the truth, then it doesn't matter what you're trying to search the truth for. You could be doing it for a job uh, to learn something new for a raise. You could be doing it to try to find truth about aliens. You could try to find the truth about music theory. You could try to find the truth about God and your own inner self. You could try to find the truth about your own inner traumas. You could try to find the truth the truth about, about anything. And just that f very act of you trying to find the truth, aka uh, Googling everything I'm talking about, which is, again, putting in the blood, sweat, and tears for the journey for the truth, just that very act is going to initiate a very important spiritual mechanism that is going to allow you to unlock the next lock or door in each step. So you might start with looking up aliens. Okay, very basic shit. You can find a million blurry photo photographs of information about the two B3 triangle spacecraft that they have. You know, you can do a bunch of research, but then that very truth is going to somehow very synchronistically uh, lead you to another discovery of something even deeper. Okay, so as long as you have that burning desire for truth, you're always, 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 always infinitely fractally going to find another deeper level. Okay, so my journey of being called to relay this information for you guys, to call you guys to a higher level, I'm calling you, anyone who's listening to this to the next level. This is the next step for humanity and for ascension. Okay, it's very important, uh, but I went on my journey through my burning desire for truth, one thing after another throughout years to to find the truth and nothing but the truth. And that led me to, to, to acknowledging my path on a way deeper level. I used to be depressed and want, you know all kinds of bad stuff and because I didn't know who I was. Well, I just always wanted to know the truth. And you can even do the whole uh, cliched calling out to God. A lot of Christian people who like grew up Christian, but then we're like, fuck that shit because it's kind of stupid, you know, because a lot of it's disillusioned, you know, they, you know, they grew up being told by pastors and their parent or parents or whoever, uh, family members to be like, just call out for God for help and he'll help you. He'll answer you. It's all good. And I'm like, right, right. But the trick is to do that, but you need to be in a completely 110% state of vulnerability. And you, therefore, when you call out to father for help, when you call out to mother for help, when you call out to your ancestors and everybody watching over you out of love for help, you need to do it genuinely. You can't just be like all pissed off and be like, I want fucking help and they're probably not gonna give it to me, but whatever, I want, I need help. Like, please help me. Like, no, you need to be honest and genuine and you need to, you need to wholeheartedly 110%, not 99%, 110% ask for that help. And then somehow magically you'll find an answer and it'll be like, holy shit. It'll come to you in a way that you did not expect. Okay. This is very important. So you have fractals, underlying patterns of the universe. Um, I used to have growing up, I used to have these very philosophical impressions on my mind that were extremely deep so much to the point to where especially growing up I could not communicate them okay one of them basically was this vision that I would always have growing up for a very long time of me holding basically the tr trying to grab the entire world with my hand which is so big you can't do it you can put your hand on the ground which is the earth but my hand is so small I can't grab the whole earth but I envisioned doing it anyway which is a paradox it's it's a it doesn't make sense it seems impossible I can't wrap my tiny little human hand that's only about six inches long around the entire world okay but I imagined it anyway same thing with this secondary part to that vision where I would also grab a pile of sand and then I would only hold one grain of sand but with my whole fist which now it's flipped where now my hand is overly encompassing something tiny like a grain of sand aka a tiny world now that's interesting because it led me down another philosophical idea which is the idea that you can have two opposing things 
okay? Like, for example, two, uh, two opposing things would be the North Pole and the South Pole. You cannot physically be on the South Pole if you're already at the North Pole, okay? But the theory I'm talking about is the idea that you can, that those two opposing things can actually be existing at the same exact time, no matter what it is or no matter where you are, no matter what's going on, it can. And somehow I've, as a, as a kid, grew up with that kind of stuff in my mind. So, of course, I wanted to always know the truth and blah, 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 and here we are. So what I just explained to you, I, it's probably went over most of your guys' heads, but that's totally okay because all I'm trying to say is that that is an underlying pattern of the universe, just like the fractals. Okay, it is. Um, you can rewind what I said and listen to it. But uh, like I said, just do some research and you will find out that, holy shit, I'm right. So um, now you got tripping the sacred way. So psychedelics are including uh, marijuana or weed or whatever um, is something that you can utilize to really, 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 really get down with what I'm talking about. Now, a lot of people go and trip mushrooms in certain settings that are not necessarily bad, but they're also not conducive to really releasing the mechanism of sacredness for you to smell or to, for you to experience. So again, yeah, like, like everybody knows that mushrooms are sacred because they're mushrooms. They unlock things. You know, people have experiences they can't explain because it's so deep and all that kind of shit, but they don't really understand how to acknowledge sacredness. So by... Doing your entire ritual, which would consist of your entire day of prepping for the mushrooms, which means um, essentially not eating for most of the day and prepping an altar or saging your house or just preparing your, your entire life for that whole day for that trip is acknowledging, is acknowledging the sacredness behind mushrooms. Okay, not LSD just mushrooms or any other natural psychedelic plant, even smoking pot, okay? But the mushrooms is, is uh, something that's very powerful uh, and clean. It's not dirty, right? So by acknowledging the sacredness in that, by preparing in, in every single thing you do, acknowledging that you're doing it for a sacred purpose of knowledge, Okay, you want to unlock the knowledge that the mushrooms have to show you. And when you do it wholeheartedly, genuinely in your heart, that's what you truly actually for real, for real want. Okay, you're going to launch into a whole nother fucking category of stuff. Okay, now it's not for the faint of heart. Be very careful. You need to be able to be in a place where you know that you are loved, know that you are safe, know that everything's okay, be secluded. Um, be safe, be with people that you truly trust and not people that you do not trust. Um, take into consideration your own safety. And I'm not talking about in fear of something because that's stupid and doesn't, doesn't work. But uh, just be safe and be, be safe so you can get into a vulnerable state. Okay, because when you can get vulnerable, then you can be more wholehearted in everything that you do. So Tripping the Sacred Way. That's a crash, a very small, short crash course. I'm going to be doing another episode that's going to go all into everything that you need to do when you do mushrooms because what I'm talking about is a very sacred, religious, spiritual way of life that, that deserves every beautiful, positive acknowledgement on the planet and it deserves to be recognized as something beautiful and sacred and not dangerous. Okay, it's only dangerous if you're stupid and if you're going about it rec recklessly, which means the same thing for anything. If you go about anything recklessly, it's going to be disastrous no matter what. So obviously just don't do anything recklessly and acknowledge the sacredness and be aware of everything that you are and that you do. Again, there's a reason that I'm calling you guys all to do these things because I'm going to be repeating myself on acknowledging everything consciously that you can be aware of as much as possible and acknowledge the sacredness and everything. And if you do that, you're pretty much set to go. So no worries, but just do those two things. But I'm not done yet, okay? It's gonna be really hard for your normal person to get to that point of actually doing those two things without initiating the basic initial first 
process that you need to initiate in order for yourself to really ig- initiate the mechanism of of your healing because most everybody is on earth um going through very very hardcore traumas every day throughout their whole life as well as all their past lives and so we're trying to heal from all of that so you need to start clearing up space inside yourself and gaining the ability for you to easily or more easily be aware and when i say be aware i mean just simple just simple be aware okay that cuz that means that that's going to be applying to everything and nothing at the same time so you have the uh, you have the awareness of just simple being aware where you are just simply aware of your own awareness and nothing else okay and then you have you have that which will initiate the secondary mechanism of being aware of everything else on a constant daily basis well how do we do that okay well it should be very obvious that most every ancient culture teaches techniques that involve breathing meditation and forming of the body so you have meditating which will go hand in hand with breathing as well as yoga which is form of the body so you have meditating breathing and form of the body so it it's, it almost doesn't matter where you learn this stuff as long as you learn how to meditate as long as you learn how to breathe and as long as you learn how to basically do yoga or form of the body okay now meditation and breathing are my personal essentials because you need those period yoga means to meditate while in these forms for as long as you can take it right that's basically yoga and so meditating is already a part of yoga right yoga from my perspective is especially designed to train your body or to train your uh, spirit mind and body in the discipline of essentially just discipline itself okay because a lot of what i'm talking about this deeper work is very difficult and you need a lot of discipline so you need to practice all this kind of stuff every day which is why i say throughout your entire daily life everything that you do should be a sacred act okay this is a daily practice which will which will result in discipline okay everything i'm talking about are is desirable for everybody so if everybody did this they would um, automatically be feeling within themselves that they are now more worthy okay so you meditate well when you learn how to meditate you will start this initiation process of you releasing trauma and healing yourself from everything you need to heal from as well as collective healing uh where we are healing all together at the same time all of the world's traumas taking it upon our upon ourselves to feel um go through going through processes of feeling stuff that you're like why am i feeling that it's like that's the world's problem not necessarily mine well we are all here collectively helping each other heal okay so when you learn to meditate by clearing the mind you can like it's a, it's inevitable you're going to have fucked up shit come into your mind you're going to have some stuff that you don't want to think about just pop into your mind as well as a lot of other crazy stuff um the trick is to i mean everybody knows this stuff you all know this work you are all here designed pre predisposed with the skills and the previous knowledge of past lives to do this work and so now i'm calling upon everybody who hears this to actually put in this work because it's blood sweat and tears it's hard it's the hardest thing you'll ever do but it's going to be the most beautiful liberating hero's journey that you've ever conceived of in your entire mind or your entire existence that you've ever perceived it's going to be the greatest thing ever and it already is So when you can meditate and clear your mind, you're causing this bubbling effect inside yourself where traumas and things that need to be healed bubble up for you to acknowledge. They will come in the form of visual representations for you to witness like a memory. They will come in the form of physical ailments such as a very brief nausea and uh being kind of dizzy and weird. and a lot of weird experiences that are almost inexplainable will start to bubble up okay but just be be aware that you're safe and that you're just doing this work and this is kind of a byproduct of it okay you might get nauseous you might start thinking differently and there will be life life itself will present to you scenarios that are essential for you to learn from i have anger issues for example or i did in the past for example and it was very prominent very bad i was always angry about a lot of stuff and so i would constantly have things in my life that would pop up that would trigger my anger and everything you experience in your external reality is designed for you to learn from 
So if you can just do the work to learn from it because you're sick of the bullshit, frankly, then you will learn from it and then life will be easier and you won't have these same things popping up all the time randomly for you to experience, which are bad. A lot of people go, fuck, I can't get a break. You know what I mean? Damn it. Well, you can, but just do the work. Okay. So clearing the mind and meditation. And then when you practice yoga, it will start to have similar effects and really amp up what I just talked about, but coming out through your joints and through, through your, through your physical body, because not only will it really amp up the process, but it's also, you have a lot of trauma and pain and a lot of memories stored everywhere in your body, especially your joints, which is why a lot of people got back problems, hip problems, knee problems, blah, blah, blah problems, (laughs) you know? So this is essential. Okay. So I'm going to end this because I could ramble forever, but I know it was a lot of information. I'm going to repeat a lot of this stuff just to really get it into your guys' minds. But uh, now I'm going to let everybody process with some amazing music and uh, feel free to light one up. This is Live Free Radio. This is DJ Leonetikos, and here we go.
Free Radio. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed either part. I mean, the information in the beginning, which is very important, and or the music. If you're watching this on YouTube or anywhere where you can leave comments, uh, be sure to leave a comment with any questions that you might have, contact information. Let's start a line of communication because communicating is also very important. So I'm very, very open to people wanting to communicate with me on more of a one-on-one basis if they wanted to. Ask me further questions. Let's have a conversation. So welcome to the apocalypse, everybody. I mean, I hope everybody realizes that when I say apocalypse, the word itself means the unveiling. So it's kind of like We are now being able to see the truth, whereas before there was a veil over our eyes preventing us from seeing that truth. So this is DJ Leonetikos bringing you Live Free Radio. Love and light, everybody.